Perfect. Greetings, my fellow lovers of science and destruction, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome back to the adventure mode, where today, we're going to be doing something completely different to the previous videos. Today, we have the distinct privilege of testing out a brand new weapon in From the Depths. This is the Plasma Cannon. Now, this is going to be probably one of the most subject-to-change videos I have ever created. This isn't even in the alpha yet. It is absolutely brand new, and Lots of feedback is going to be needed to sculpt this weapon into its final form. And today, what I want to do is create a craft dedicated to our brand new weapon, test out exactly how it works, because honestly, this is all just brand new to me as well. I made sure not to do any testing before this video, and of course, give our own feedback by the end of it. So it is a plasma cannon, so it is very similar to the energy weapons, except for I believe it does also use ammunition. So we have the generators, generates plasma charge, from ammo and energy. Then we have the chambers, which store those charges, which then get collected and sent to the main weapon itself, which, which then has accelerators, heat sinks, and I think that's pretty much it at the moment. It does have the magnetic destabilizer as well, which will split a single charge into two shots, but reduce armor piercing. So we have the things creating the plasma, the storage, and then that moves into the weapon itself, which I assume the mantlets are also acting as the cannon piece itself. Yes, they are. Okay, that's pretty straightforward to me. Let's see how this thing actually connects up. It's time to build some very deadly Lego. Okay, so I just messed around for a good 5-10 minutes just to make sure I have the basics down here. So let's just go with this. So right now we have the plasma forward mantlet. That's going to be our firing piece. We then have the connection hubs, there we are, which are the exact same as the laser systems connectors, and then we can add a collector. Then the collector is going to be just like the laser system laser coupler, so you can add other things to it. So what we should do, from the collector, we can then add a chamber. So let's add one of these large chambers, why not? I think we can put that straight there, correct? So this can hold four charges. We then add the generators to the side of this thing, and I think these pins may be incorrect, because I can't add it to the end, which confused me for a good five minutes a moment ago, but I can add them to the side. So these should now be generating charges, and then we can decide how to fire them. So at the moment, charge is used per shot. Oh, so we can use multiple charges in a single shot to increase the damage, or fire them off one at a time. That's really cool. That's very similar to the particle cannon and the charging time. So in theory, this should just work now. It's very basic level. Yep, that worked. That was four shots. Ooh, they look cool. Can we make them slower? There we go, accelerator energy per charge. Each shot uses this much acceleration energy for each charge used. So let's put that really low then. One energy, okay, that should be really slow shots, all right? Lovely. Oh, that's really cool. They don't drop. Interesting. So they just continue in a straight line forever. They do lose damage over time, I'm now seeing that. Okay, so we're getting the very basics done. Let's just spawn an enemy for a second. Uh, Deepwater Guard, because this is going to be very weak at the moment. This is just the most basic thing we could do. And there's a python currently there. Slow shots. It's funny how normally I don't really cover much of the building anymore since we've seen it all before, but this time it really does matter. Oh, there's a new symbol in the top right as well. That's interesting. Well, it didn't do too much damage, but that's, again, to be expected. These are minimum charges at minimum speed. Still okay, though, with a big, like, uh, knockback. Okay, let's see if we can make this rapid fire, because instantly I want this thing to rapid fire. So I can stack collectors like this, then put in the chambers like this, and then are there large generators? Yes, there are. Okay, so let's replace these teeny tiny generators with bigger ones. So I'm already kind of seeing in my head how the Tetris is going to go, because by the end of this, I do want to make an actual turret for a tank. So that should now fire quite a few. Lovely, look at that line of death. I'm going to have to change the colour of the shots, though, because they're hard to see. So far, very positive about this weapon. 
Since there's no textures or base colors at the moment, I'm gonna add some basic stuff just so I know what's going on. Okay, so the chambers are gonna be green, the generators are gonna be yellow, and then everything else will just be white except for the firing piece, which I might just make darker so I can see what's going on. Oh, never mind, it doesn't seem to work. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's go full green for the shots, and let's up the speed of the shots as well. Okay, so does that actually increase the damage, or is it purely the speed? Oh, it's also increasing the heat per shot. That's something I didn't really consider. Oh yeah, accelerator temperature. 508 degrees Celsius. That's a lot. Um, so how exactly do the accelerators work? Accelerates plasma charges. Do we put them next to the collectors, or how does that work? Connect to plasma cap. Oh, okay, so does just go directly to the cannon. Is this like the barrel, then? Yes, it is. Okay, so these are the accelerators. What exactly do the accelerators do? Oh, do they increase the maximum chart? Okay, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing as a benefit straight away. But I did see we have heat sinks, and these are on top of that. Okay. So that's removing the temperature quickly. There is also energy used for cooling, so I guess if you have a really rapid fire one, that's probably for the best. Okay, so maximum energy, these will now take 800 per shot, so they should be firing a lot faster. Oh yeah, that's almost instant hits. Ooh, I am already really liking this weapon. So the next step is to use multiple charges per shot. So it's going to use 16 per shot. This will take the damage from 1,000 per shot to 16,000. Okay, so it's literally just one-to-one. -one. That's lovely. Maximum charges we can get per second. Heat per shot is obviously also increased. And the projectile speed is also the same. Though it's going to be a big block of energy this time rather than spread out. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's test against something nice and far away. So, Tremor, please spawn over here this time. How long does it take to recharge? Well, actually, it does say, doesn't it? Three per second, and it takes 16 before it fires, so you can actually just figure out exactly how long the reload is there. And naturally, I fall off the base. Okay, let's test out this. So, this is a single charge rather than the pack charge, and. Looks like we're going to lose about 10% before it actually hits. Though we don't lose our armor piercing, which is a very big deal. So this time all 16, once again slow motion. Okay, so that's going down way faster. So I think it's based on the max damage, it's probably percentage based then, which makes sense. That's good as well though, because it means the larger shots and the smaller shots probably deal about the same range in terms of percentage, which makes me happy because I really, really love the rapid fire. Let's make this way bigger, and then see just how many we can actually add to the charges. What's the absolute cap of this thing? As I'm doing this, I realise something. Can you stack multiple generators on a single chamber? It looks like you can. Let's just make sure that is actually moving faster. Yeah, this is on two, this one's still on zero. Okay, so if you're going for rapid fire, it may be better to have more generators than more chambers. Whereas if you want slower but really hard hitting ones, you probably want more chambers and then just wait for it to load up. Or of course, a middle of the road one, which is probably the most efficient, but you know, it's me and I very rarely go efficient. So the temperature limit is 1000. Whereas this is going to go way over the 1,000 limit, can we still fire it, even though it's going to instantly cause this thing to overheat? Slow down time so, so I can actually see the shot. No, it has all 80. Whoa, look at that damage drop off though. And again, this is in extreme slow motion. Only 10k. That's the thing I'm finding interesting. It really does seem to have a very small radius of damage. Okay, so right now, we can generate 16 charges per second. If we fire at the full amount, we're still not using up all those charges. So let's just go to two charges, and then... How many per second would that be? I'm just going to do the maths quickly. Okay, so, we can do 480 of these per minute. So that is a sustainable fire rate, I believe. I wonder if it actually says that anywhere. 
Well, this is my sure I've actually done that correctly then. Go! That is very quickly tearing things off. Because it's got that 100 armor piercing value by default, it means it's doing full damage to everything. Heavy armor, stacked armor, I mean, it's going to be very, very difficult to stop. Though I do think stacked heavy armor would be able to stop some of its damage. Either way, that is so consistent. It's like fireworks. That's not a bad weapon at that range. I think consistency is going to be its main strength if it stays like this. So I think we've got the very, very basics down. Obviously, I need to learn how to, how to Tetris this. So I'm going to remove this, make a new tank, or use one of our old tanks and hollow it out. And let's see if we can just add a small plasma cannon, which is reliable. Quickly first, though, since I know the Orion's decently armored, I want to see this thing versus a proper armored target. If I actually spawned it somewhere where we could fire. That is just chewing through. It's so weird hardly being able to see them, though. Again, this is maximum slow motion in this game. Absolutely love this. Okay, I'll be back soon once I've made a, the base of a new vehicle, and then we can see if we can make a functional tank using this thing. Well, once it hits something very light armor, this thing just chews through it, even with the minimum stats like that. Also, my stamina's been bad today. I'm just happy to have a new weapon, you know? I just realized I never did get to test out this thing. Ooh, so that's the Magnetic Destabilizer. Splits a single charge into two shots and reduces the armor-piercing value. Wonder what to... Oh, so with this, you can't stack charges, so it's only going to fire single charges. So this is going to be shredding very, very light armor. Interesting. I really do like the style of the heat sinks. So I think maybe the heat sinks are only there for the accelerators at this point. Again, I still can't figure out what they're actually doing to the weapon. If anyone knows or has seen something, feel free to tell me. But it seems like even without the accelerators, this thing still works fine. It's just more for the heat sinks. So, what I'm going to try and do is add as many generators as possible. Less so the chambers. I'm going to try and go for a rapid fire cannon because... Who's surprised by that? I absolutely adore that. Though I won't go very high energy per shot because this is meant to be a feasible weapon, one which you can keep on firing. If you use too much energy per shot, you're gonna run out of your batteries in moments. So, gonna keep that low, keep the fire rate high, and have slow moving, rapid projectiles, which don't do too much damage, but hopefully if we just pepper the entire battlefield with them, we're gonna beat something. You okay there, mate? You excited about it too? Okay, good. Ugh, this is some terrible Tetris, but it'll do for now. Trying to go for as many of those as possible. Just gonna make sure it can fit into a decent chamber. Okay, I don't know if you just heard that on the microphone, but a helicopter just went really close to my house. Like, ridiculously close. Okay, well that was weird. Now I feel like I'm being watched by some kind of agency. So I've been testing out a little bit with the destabilizer. Honestly, not a massive fan at the moment. Maybe later on I'll find some more uses for it, but that lack of um, armor penetration, at least against the larger enemies, just seems to be such a major hindrance. Yes, yeah, so I've basically made a block of metal at the moment. Okay, it's gonna be a pretty simple build. I'm reusing some of the wheel setup from one of my previous tanks, but all the center has been made from scratch. Obviously, there's gaps in the sides I need to fill in, and the secondary engine needs to be added. After that, we just need the turret cap. The center has been triple armored in pretty much every sense, so as the battery and material storage. It's gonna be quite cheap to fire and probably cost around about 100,000, I think, at the moment. If this works reliably, then I'm very, very happy with the new weapon, and I'm happy in my very, very quick tank building skills, because this is the fastest I've ever built a tank before. Even if it's not exactly fancy. Is this starting to look like mint and uh, choc chip ice cream? Yes. Am I okay with that? As a lactose intolerant person, no. But that's what we're going to go with anyway. 
really basic anti-missiles done, excellent. I just want this to be a functional tank. It's not going to be the best designed or anything like that because I'm not going to be building for hours and hours and hours and hours, but still, I want it to have everything sorted. So layers of armor, some space gaps against heat, all the usual gubbins you'd expect to see, plus some really basic anti-missiles. We're just about to hit just over 100k resources. Still plenty of space, as you can see. It is very basic right now. Okay, so it seems like smoke doesn't affect plasma. At least it's not giving me the warning that's being affected. So that's good to know. Okay, that's it. All the rest of the armor's been added, and I've added a little Larry on top, because how can you do science without Larry? And that's our little plasma tank finished. It currently costs 110,000. It mostly does a big block of metal with engines and just one giant turret in the middle. It's gone for rapid fire, though I might be swapping that around after a few tests. And I'm just going to try and sport in a few things, see how it does, see how the damage does over time, and hopefully it's going to be decent. Really hoping for that. But again, balance is very subject to change. Okay, first enemy is going to be against the Hexer. The reason is the Hexer is something I've fought a lot of times before. I know the heavy arm at the front can be an absolute nightmare, and I know it's a very good overall design. Plus, the costs are similar, and this thing is a godly design. So what I'm doing is I'm firing 20 rounds per shot. There's 20 charges per shot, and yeah, that was a decent chunk then. Wow, if that was actually hitting the right place, a little bit more to the left, like that, I think that's the railgun gone. Okay. Doesn't seem too overpowered, but seems frightfully consistent. And of course, these shells, are, well, these shots, I guess, these plasma charges are going very slow. But that is quite literally the fight over. That small gun can't really get through heavy armor, and the missiles are being countered by the anti-missiles. There's no way the Hexa can win this one. Look at that, though. It is very consistent. It hits a spot, that chunk's gone. Accuracy does seem to be a problem, though. It is missing a lot of hits. Now, to be fair, the Hexer is a very flat target, so it is easy to miss this thing, but still. Oh, did that go through the target, then? It very well may have. How's it going through? Very satisfying. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Okay, so if it's going to be anti-air, it's really going to make those shots faster. So it's firing at 600 rounds per minute, and the shots are going about 1,000 meters per second. They can go up to twice as fast as that. Though it still got the job done in the end, that was the Spiral Squadron from the Steel Empire. Well, ignoring the fact he got stuck on the one doing the death spiral, this one went far better. This is with the shots going double the speed. They're going at 2,400 meters per second. So, yeah, even when it's doing little weird movements, the shots going so quickly is catching them off guard. Okay, so yes, it can very easily be used as anti-air. How about something like this? So it fires in a burst. So each of these are actually 10 plasma rounds together. I mean, that works fantastically, doesn't it? Okay, so that's something I didn't even consider until just now. So it is just firing the 10 charges per shot. And it can do that a couple of times very quickly before then having to reload using the generators. And then the fire rate slows down significantly. So it's like half of a um, shotgun kind of one, but not quite. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, well that's a fantastic way to use it then, because that burst allows it to just core straight into the target. That way it doesn't matter how big the shots are, well how big the radius is, I should say, per shot. Because you're hitting them in a succession, which then allows you to go into the target. Well, it took all these tests, but I think that's the best way of using it, at least from these very few tests. I need to do more. And yes, I did take manual control then to hit the other weapons. I do think this thing is definitely not as good as the brush cutter, let's just put it out there. Perfect. 
the very last test here, which will be two of them versus a single Relentless. The Relentless is essentially the cost of two of them combined, so I think it's a pretty fair final fight. It also is a lot chunkier, so a lot more armor to get through. So this initial burst probably won't be enough. Yep, it burst through quite a bit of metal, but definitely not enough. Okay, a lot of the outer armor is being stripped from the side. Now it's turned. Which is not really what the plasma cannons wanted there, since they wasted that burst on the front of the enemy. Another explosion, though, so that's another side weapon damaged. Yet that side weapon is completely removed now. The barrel's reset. Lots of chunks of armor being removed. Ooh, it's getting very close to the center weapon. If it can actually just about get through to that, it will probably be a victory for the plasma. So far, I am really liking how the plasma feels. It just looks fun. It's very similar to impact weapons in that way. I am still not entirely sure how the damage propagates. Is it more like an explosive weapon or is it more like an impact weapon? I couldn't really tell you. Okay, looks like one of the tank's main weapon is currently offline. That could have been from EMP. Though it looks like the Relentless' weapons are also offline. Yep, there goes the main weapon. I think with the Relentless not firing, that's a victory for the plasma tanks. Although I think the plasma tanks, yep, just ran out of energy. But the energy will return. The engines are still definitely there. At least the RTGs are. The backups. Whereas the Relentless seems to have completely turned off. Okay, at least it stood up to it. How did you get turned off so quickly? Your AI is there. What happened? It turns out what happened was actually a vital flaw on my part. I didn't give them proper material storage. So as soon as they ran out of ammo, they couldn't fire. Because they couldn't replenish their ammo stocks. That is what's in the actual ammo barrels themselves. That's what happened. Still, I am actually really happy with how this weapon looks at the moment. I do hope there is more complexity added, added to the weapon, which I'm sure there will be, considering, again, this is pre-alpha footage of the weapon. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully I can cover more updates and things in the future. This was an absolute blast to record, and now I'm going back to recording my next full playthrough, which is our first ever challenge run. So hopefully that will be out it probably sometime next week. Thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy videos like this, which are just some little extras on the full playthroughs and everything else, please, comments, likes, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Larry is loved. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Really love seeing new weapons.